Congratulations, ma. Ma, who is um, Lady Apple School? Ellie, the party that will be hearing and watching. I am the first uh, daughter to my father, Chief SSN. Chief SS SSN Apavio. And um, I am the child of God, soundly safe, and I am a minister of the gospel called into the Lord's service. And uh, I am in my father's vineyard doing what he asked me to do. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Can you tell us the memories of your background, how you grew up? Well, those are horrible things to be told. My very poor family, highly oppressed, hated by the neighborhood, and um, everybody saying um, nobody will succeed, nobody will excel there, nobody. You know, it's not really, I come to see that it's not really what people say about you, but it is what you do. Because once somebody becomes safe, God or that's another course of life for the saved soul. So I see myself as somebody, even though I grew up in a very poor background, could not afford a lot, and um, life was difficult. When I surrendered my life to Christ, it's what God says, you become the light not only of, you know, you start a light in your family. So whenever there is a genuine salvation, light has been planted in that household. It's just like Jesus coming to Israel, a very big blessing till tomorrow. All the wealth that Israel is enjoying today is by Jesus because every year people, every month, every week people are going for pilgrimage. So Israel is even being maintained alone by that. So when you now receive Jesus, you can imagine the much is bringing way back home, altering, uh, you know, uh, poverty, extreme poverty, altering everything and bringing in light. So that is what I see. My my brother was poverty, hardship, difficulties. Everything was difficult, but. Is the reverse okay. Um, probably I should quickly ask um, coming from a poor background, rejection, poverty, victimization, okay, victimization. Yes, one would now wonder, okay, oppression mm -hmm. as well. One would now wonder that things turn around. What's really the secret of that? That's what I've said. I said it's Jesus that wants to become a child of God, and if salvation is genuine. Light shines in darkness, and that light you can't control it. When your obedience is there, and your worship life is rich, it keeps taking you upward from one dimension of glory to another. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, what will now ask you? How are you coping? You are a grandmother. You are a mother. You are a wife. Lady Apostle, an actress. Um, writer, script writer, your hot of books, you know, looking at you, an evangelist, how are you really coping? Well, talking of coping, um, how are you combining your if, roles? If, if God gives you anything to do, He gives you the time, and you see the whole much time in a day, 24 hours, so you have to divide the time what for who? If you use your time effectively, you see that it will be enough. So it's just apportioning time for different things. When you want to study, you are studying and you are very strict. No visitors, no interceptions. If you want to read, you are reading. If you are writing, you are writing. And you don't, you, even if the, uh, your phone rings, you don't pick. So when you discipline yourself so that you can achieve that allotted time for that particular thing, it will help you to achieve a lot. Because the way God created us, look at the head, look at the ear, look at the eye, everything is not like that. It's not the same thing. So 
God has given us the capability and ability to be able to do a lot at once without missing out from any. One would now wonder, why would a lady apostle, I mean an evangelist, but I don't know, by calling her, I don't know whether I'm right. Go on. Okay. And um, going into acting and singing, one would now wonder that does it's all, all a hell a compass thing. Well, it shouldn't be a wonder because ministry is all embracing. Okay. Yes, so if you decide to preach the word of God, not by one way, not only on the pulpit, but by dramatizing it. You know, so when when you are watching my film, it's not entertainment. It is actually a message. So either it drives you to a message of salvation, or a message of deliverance, or a message of victory, and all of that. Then of the end time, so that the church will be conscious of the fact that Jesus is coming soon. So all my movies are messages that are part of what I am preaching on the pulpit. Then my songs, um, I discovered that there is so much adulteration to Christian songs. Anybody that does not have money and wants to make money will start singing Christian songs. He knows that they will buy, and most of them are not born again. And it, it matters the spirit behind the composition. Because there are so many religious demons. And uh, when you now see this spirit, you see them when they are doing the video aspect of it. You see masquerade dancing in God's song. They are trying to dance as, because they want to, the church wants to be like the world so that people will buy. They believe that you must tie masquerade or you now tie those traditional things and do it as if you are jumping for masquerades. So I saw everything wrong with all those. And I said, well, on my own, I can also contribute. Something I'm, I'm sure can sanctify the soul. Because song, music gets deep into your soul. So it can contaminate it seriously or it can sanctify it. So I did about seven albums exactly. and the presently and um, I'm even supposed to do some other recording this month for music and the world of fame. Mm, fame. Films, I've done a lot, more than 20 films. And uh, I've not released my last film. Thank you very much, mm. Max. We have a lot of women in church, in churches generally. Mm. How are you impacting on your women? Well, I don't really have... Um, uh, a special way to maybe to dis differentiate the women from the men, but I carry everybody along. And um, the most important thing is that, like I said, when God calls anybody to his vineyard, it's an all round ministry. So you serve the women, you serve the men, you serve the teenagers, you serve the youth, then you have serve the children, and there must be something for them. Because everybody must grow together, you know. So everybody growing together means the message will not be tilted to one way. Then from time to time you assemble the women like we do um, in a year, like this August first week. We we'll have international conferences, uh, conference, and our women will travel down. So we use that time to talk to them. The men also, I think in May they have their international conference. So for those number of days they stay. We teach them and try to give them a focus, both in the family life, church life, and responsibility towards God in these times. So the same thing with the youth, with the singles, with the, so nobody is actually left out in our ministry. And the message is such that it has to spread across everyone, at helping them, assisting them, giving them focus, making them to take tough decisions for God, Especially in an age where people are toying with God, you know. So that is that. Since we are having these teachings, I mean, in the church, I'm sure we are having it. I mean, in other churches too. Why are we having high rates of divorce? Well, when you talk about divorce, you have to first go to the foundation. How did they start that marriage? That is number one. Number two, somebody would have been a liar. One of them would have been an actor, imposter, you know, and poses as if 
he or she is born again, and so on. So the high rate of divorce also has to do uh, with a generation that is in a haste. So a man cannot marry, like Abraham married Sarah, for more than 20 years without a child. They don't. By the time it's 10 years, they will start seeing revelation. God told them the wife is a witch, the husband is a wizard. So that spirit of enduring to the end, which the Bible says, that he that endureth to the end. So you even see ministers of God not willing to endure to the end. So they teach the people, and people now believe, and since they are copying also American Christianity, not the Bible Christianity. It makes it what's American Christianity. American Christianity, anything goes. When they are talking on television, I really thank God, you know, I had married the first wife and divorced her, second one, divorced her, until God gave me my fourth wife, who is really my wife now, I say it's my bono. People say, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that is American Christianity and not the Bible Christianity. The Bible Christianity ties you to one woman, one man. So that is that. So, um, but since democracy, you know, the demons are crazy and is entering the church, so the church is acting like the world. And they won't even have the patience. You've divorced. The Bible says, if you have divorced, stay without marriage. But they will say, God told me to marry. Everybody says, God told me to marry. So then, making the word of God of non effect. We will not see this person divorce and stay and born until he goes to meet with his Lord. But somehow, along the line, he will come and say, God said, as if that marriage is going to do anything or implement anything in heaven. So this is it. We have a hasty generation that are everything. They have to time up everything. It has to be now or never. Mm -hmm. So nobody endures, even to serve God. The services, you know, somebody is a Christian, is having the mentality of consulting with a native doctor. I have, I have um, goita. If God doesn't cure me in one year, I will look for cure anyhow. And when you say, he said, I'm a Christian. No, that is not Christianity. By the time you become a Christian, you come and see some other beauty of God in such a way that whatever problem you had becomes insignificant. The joy of salvation that gives the believer it does not remove pains, humiliation, mispresentation, and all of that. Those things work together for good for them that love God. But this generation say, not my portion. You know when they say, not so I can't endure persecution. Not my portion. But the Bible says, you must endure persecution to the end. Everybody wants to prove that what they are saying is wrong. What they are saying is not true. It's not true. Eh, they must claim it. I must claim myself. So that has altered the pattern that Jesus set for his church. And so the church keeps having crisis in the home. Crisis. And you know the way people change church. A new church is coming. They change. So there is always a wave. Now people don't get saved and become stable and worship God with the intent to be with him at the end. They said there are many churches I can worship. I, they forget that it's one, one God, one Savior, one Holy Spirit. You cannot mess up God here and go there to, to be a better Christian. No, your works will follow you. The Bible says their works follow them. So this is what we are having. Why too many fake things? And most people to pastors having vision of somebody, you, the Lord said you should marry this. Wrong matches. So you force an elderly woman to a young boy's life. It will, it will crash because it's not of the Lord. So, so what's the solution? Yeah, to follow the, to just, if people are genuine, you say you are saved and you are living your life by the standard of the world, the world purifies. The word keeps and preserves. And the word of God gives satisfaction even in numerous physical lacks. You gain satisfaction that makes those needs 
insignificant. Not strong enough. You see somebody who is a Christian, you know, keeping his problem like this. If God won't do it today, if he does not, I have been in this church now nine months, nothing, nothing. Hey, there is a place if you go within three weeks. So because of the pastors are going to get magical powers that can make you clear them, you know, because they are humans, they are um, they are what the mundane, you know, and they are flaps. Flaps means zombies, zombies. They want to see it happen now. Whereas that is not God's principle. God's principle, if you continue, if your feet abide, if you are stable, I will do it in my own time. And when God will do it, you won't even expect if you now come to him. So the solution is is that people must be genuinely saved, not church church membership. I, I am now, I was here, now I joined this. I was here, now I joined. I used to go here, but I left. So there is no salvation, no history of salvation of soul. Because that is what sticks somebody with Christ. That is what sticks somebody with God. And where such is not, you cannot expect stability, not only in marriage or anything, you know, even in your worship. Thank you. Can you tell us how you met your husband? I can't remember. That is a long time ago. Okay, thank you mm. very much. And I want to keep that private. Thank you very much. Okay. What are the things that you like? What are your likes? My likes? Everything righteous. Everything holy. And I hate idolatry. I hate spiritism. And I hate anything that is demonic, even when they try to color it as if it is spirituality. I always resist it. Thank you very much. Now, what role challenges you most as a lady at most? <laughs> well, that would be very hard to answer over the years. Um, Every challenges that come, God makes me to see them as normal. We are humans. So there is nothing that should be shocking, that should be... And it is like God bringing, you know, this call is like God bringing me into the fellowship of human management. Teaching me who humans are and how you can manage them. And that is what the Holy Spirit has done. So I cannot say this one is, you know, I was overwhelmed or excited or shocked or surprised. No, because for man, I can expect anything. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Ma. What is your fashion? What do you like wearing? Not going naked. Not showing your body contour. And um, not necessarily being at the forefront of fashion, and also not being behind fashion. Thank you. Try to be relevant to the time and season. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, man. Your happiest day in life. So you know, I became born again. That was me. Ah, that was thirty something years ago. You know, I became born again. Because it, it took me to a path of life that every day something is added to my life. And I'm, and I'm getting much better, closer, having very good relationship um, with God. But that doesn't mean that I may not hurt people because um, I disagree a lot with a lot of things. So like... Like surface Christianity, like pastor, me. like pastor telling lies, <laughs> or pastor telling you hey, when you come do this, say this, say that when you are coming to my church, say this, say that you know. So I don't accept that. So that could make people label you whatever they want, or oh, holier than thou, or oh, this, or wait for anything that will be humiliating. If I to them, they will escalate it. So, but then, one thing I do is to maintain 
a conscience void of offense before God and before man. Whereas they say so much about me or against me, whereas it is not, it gives me satisfaction. Thank you very much. Have you had any regrets in life? Regrets? Maybe if at the end of life I don't go to heaven, that will be my only regret. Otherwise, every other thing that happens in life is part of growth, spiritual maturity, and takes me to different levels. Any, any kind of degrading thing that comes my way, because there are many, <laughs> there are so many, I can't be counting them. You know, like uh, when Atheist came to Nigeria, 2008, even before they came, they published in London newspaper, Observer newspaper and uh, which other one? Guardian and another paper, three papers. The publisher. The National Guardian. Uh, and now the one outside the country. Yes, the one in uh, UK, in, in London. UK. Okay. So they published that this church, Liberty, kills children, level them witches, kill them, parents carry the children there to be killed. Now, they read it and people were angry in UK. But I, I didn't know I was here. Mm. Then they put it on the internet. We never had internet in our church in 2008 uh, or before then. In fact, they published that in November 2007. But look at what the Spirit of God does. In 2008, somehow, uh, I told you, I called my, uh, you know, the elder that is in charge of my protocols. I said, we must have internet. We must. So I, before I said, whatever it takes, they brought in the, I said, buy uh, laptops, this, this, this. I need internet. I didn't know what God wanted me to know. So when they brought it, fixed the internet, this, 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 they just type hello, Bible. Then they saw uh, killer of the, uh, this thing, children monstrous evangelist, wicked woman of God, <laughs> witch hunter. So when we went, it was horrible. Now before we knew it, they were already in Nigeria because the idea was that they, they come with that activism, that they are coming to save children whom Helno Pavio is killing. And if you also know that Nigerians are not well enlightened, Nigerians don't know that in UK, you don't read Bible in primary and secondary school even in the university. Now, you can never enter a shop in UK and see Bible. You can never, if people enter your shop and see Bible, they will not come, they will not patronize that shop. You can never print handbills and start giving to people. Some people will call police for you that you are scared to bring them. Now, these are the people that say they want to come and save children, and I don't know the children. But I saw children that they said they nailed them, some said they tortured them, and so they, they now imposed my picture. Now, when they came here to interview me, this is what they said to me. And when they came, I told them, don't put me on camera, I don't know who you are. But I didn't know they had like a secret filming something. They said, uh, Madam, do you truly believe that God exists? I said, yes. They said, where? Somehow. I said, this could be the people that wrote something about me. I said, where, where does it exist? He said, yes. Zaha, in my life, in your life. He said, no, no, it's not in you. Now, can you climb this, your pulpit, and let your members know that there is no God, no angel, no evil spirit, no Satan. So I screamed. That is what they said. You know, that is what they showed in that they are listening. They said, when accosted on why she is killing children, this is what she says. Do you understand? So those who watch all over the world contributed money to atheists. Many of those organizations were churches. The Bible says, let the little children come to me. Why must you kill children? So churches were writing to me, and Pavio resists from killing the children. You, you know, God will kill your children. And... It was all over the world. And they were now pursuing the government. The government have not done anything. I'm killing children. Secret agencies come to my I me. Mean, I don't care because I'm doing my programs. And I was like, I'm killing children. Then I'm establishing churches all over. Then I've never been arrested. When ordinary fighting, even in home or street fighting, they will jail you. Then they know that in Nigeria, you are a murderer of children. 
The nurse said, oh, she said children are witches just because I have the gift of discernment of spirits. And I don't discern things for children. It has to be parents coming with their children. Like you see the screening of yesterday. Did you see anything hurtful? Eh, thank God you came around. You didn't even know what we were doing. Now, those are the things. So if there is anything, we pray out. But how somehow they model the whole thing to suit and package it to suit them. And they did all that noise, made all the money, won a lot of people into atheism and uh, into Freemasonry. They would rather allow you to join Freemasonry. They even told me that if I stop preaching Jesus, they will make me great. I screamed. I said, get out! Get out of this church! <laughs> what are you? Do you think that this is... Get out! And they, they lie a lot. Oh, the other one said, I'm a Catholic. Then it was when she now, when I later on knew that they were atheists, then I now saw how, how they taught them, you know, they taught them, they teach their people how to impersonate. When I was trying to kind of get hold on them, they were calling Nigerian police as if they were uh, the president of the uh, UK, or, you know, as if they were like uh, Cameron or any of those, said, yes, uh, this, 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 I'm a minister of this, uh, and this, in Nigeria, in this, Nigeria is going, people now say, ah, international community. So I just see that Nigeria is very backward, and you don't have anybody to defend you. They even carry that thing to the Senate and show them. And I was like, I should have been invited, and I invited, and they bring it up. Because Were I was invited. No, I was. That is what I'm saying. In Nigeria, nobody protects you. People can come here and kill you for nothing. I was not invited. But if it were to be in their own cabinet, they would have invited the person and these people together. But they watch all that, and, and maybe they took it. So I had them. After Sunday, I just said, let me leave them. They call me names. I say that the devil is attacking my gift. Let me be focused and leave them. Finally, the government now, the Kwaibo government discovered that they were fraudulent and um, discovered that um, where they say they were gathering children up to 200, there were no such children, about 34 children, and the children were paying school fees. It's like a, <laughs> a school for the less privileged, mm -hmm. only one black man. And then they fell out with the black man the Nigerian man, the Nigerian man, they fought until they went to the paper, they were abusing themselves in the paper. This one said, you stole this one, said, because they had used me to frame me up, they've made their money, but the foolish Nigerian man, they did not give him his share. So that brought trouble between them. And up to today, nothing is done, but I leave it uh, for God. So what I'm trying to say is that there's such negativity, but if you go all over the internet, it's there. But such negativity cannot rob me of the joy of salvation because um, it's, it's, it's strong. The Spirit of God is very strong, linking the soul. And you get to that level, everything in the world is, is, is nonsense. So that is it. I don't have regrets yes, in life. Do you still have time for the home front? Because they cook for your family and things. If I don't cook, my husband don't eat. And I cook better than any other person. Even this church, this year I cook for them. The other the workers said, you are going to eat my food. So I have time to, I'm a woman. Okay. Yes, I cook most of my dishes. Okay, so then I'm for other house chores. You still have time for them. Like what? Other house chores. That's what I said, like what? Maybe other things in the house, apart from cooking, you still have time for them. <laughs> well, if those things can be specific, okay. because it will definitely it will not be everything that I I can't have time to start sweeping the house when I sweep. Okay. I sweep. I sweep. Sometimes I sweep uh, my room or where I stay. Okay. Then sometimes I call people to sweep them for me because we plan them. Okay. But then I no longer have time to take care of the general house. And I used to clean a lot on Saturdays. You mm. see me scrubbing, doing this. But the volume of work. I have now, you know, over 300 churches. Mm -hmm. uh, then I, I must make plans to reach, you know, here and there, and I'm still planting churches. Does not really give me time to look at some, some of those minor things. 
And then I have hands that do that. But then if you don't notice it, they won't do it. So I, I try to notice everything. I'm very inquisitive. Yes, because I'm a woman. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Who is your role model? Jesus Christ. Um, what's your view on women's contribution to national development? The national corruption or development? Development. National development. Okay. I don't really know because the women that I have seen, uh, when they go, when they join politics or whatever, they go to speak the same language. What is the same language? Well, corruption. In Nigeria, everything ends. We always say, ah, this person will go, he will not compromise. Before you know it, the person becomes um, a defender of what is wrong. Now, to, to, to really contribute nationally will be to uh, be able to rationalize what is going on in Nigeria and come up with the correct thing. But when you say that they mark you out for destruction because they feel you are trying to destroy their merchandise. So if a woman, if there is a woman at all and wants to be a woman, then her voice should be different. Not this one that we hear, women are under arrest, the woman is uh, after office, after a national office, you are under arrest, you are being tried for stealing, for money. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbecoming of womanhood. Women used to be very strict and fierce and disciplined, tough, direct, to actualizing and achieving peoples when in public office. But I think all of that is lost because it has become a game instead of uh, positive, uh, positively bringing uh, changes. So but we are still praying that God can still raise up somebody. Remember the woman um, some years back, I can't remember, in the, I don't know whether it was in House of Reps, or uh, whether she was a senator, she was like saying, let women dress and cover their nakedness. She was attacked by pastors, pastors, because most of the pastors have for wives, all these family water women that are going naked. They are the ones that people, God bless you, they say it's the pastor's wife. And, you know, spreading their uh, venom, evil spirit all over. They were even the ones, such a thing, the church should think first. But they're the one attacking. They want a woman to tell you that they want to pass a bill where Nigerian women should stop wearing shorts, exposing their nakedness and covering their nakedness. How does that affect the church? The church was, even the Muslims that we say, those ones say yes, they were in support of that bill. The Muslim women, but the Christian women. So I cannot, I don't really know. I can't speak for them. But all I know is that if there is any woman out there that wants to be straight, the world will want to crucify her. Um, what can other women learn from you? So much. Being very industrious. Yes, very industrious and uh, focused and steadfast. Doing what you are doing all the time, <laughs> every time. As long as life is in you. So, so they should see that aspect. Then they should also see somebody who loves God. Okay. Yes. I will not want to derail from the truth. Um, how do you relax? Ah, scrabble. I play scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> then I watch um, football. Okay. Uh, I am an Arsenal fan. Mm. Not just fan. What's your hobby? My hobby is actually... Um, okay, maybe you finish that other question. Okay. How you relax then before your hobby? Okay. I relax with um, Scrabble, playing Scrabble, um, and that means I must see somebody who knows how to play very well. And then um, another thing is um, um, watching football well, all, most of the time. Uh, the reason is that um, uh, I am an Arsenal fan. I'm not just uh, an Arsenal fan. Over the years, I am a registered Arsenal fan, so I pay my dues and I, I get 
do some things from them like that. So then um, that is, I like um, football, but not in all cases. Then another thing is that uh, when I relax, some of the times um, I just like to watch good movies with good um, story lines. So if the storyline is strong and makes for a good character, I like watching, but I hate uh, comedy. Um, thank you very much, Ma. What is uh, what should be the role of a female general overseer? Well, it depends on the calling. It, it's not an office you can just enter on your own. Okay. It depends on the calling. What is God asking you to do? You know, people. What I have seen, most women who come to me, I want to know whether I have a calling. I told them in the first place, you don't have. If you have, you won't come to any more. Really? Who never? Yes. You said you had a calling. Then you are coming to Helen Pavio, who was not there when God called you. He was not, who was not there when the term was pronounced. If God is going to call you to be a general overseer, those general overseers are not trained. They are made. I have never been to any Bible college. Yes. I was not even a Christian worker, but I was a child of God studying the word and when I had my calling. Now, the, 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 the fact is, God is a, a, a supreme being like God cannot give you a calling and you go to a human flesh for confirmation. When you receive a calling that is genuine, you don't need to confer with flesh and blood. Now, let me tell you what pastors do. They go to preach in the church. You, you have a calling. Come, let me pour you oil. You have a calling. They have created so much confusion. So they say, the Bible, uh, God is telling me that you should start your own. And you go there, you don't know anything. You don't have anything. You don't even have the word. You don't have the spirit. Then you don't have the grace. Because when God calls, he gives the grace. So you see a lot of people stumbling. Then you see others now, they must make it at all costs. So they join cults and have something to amplify them, like an amplifier to, to power them, so that people will say, but again, that will not last. So your hobby is now? My hobby is, I like walking, but because of, um, because um, walking, just walking. Okay. W-A-L-K. W-A-L-K-I-N-G. Okay. Yes, I like just take a walk and walk. Um, but um, incidentally, you can't walk on the street. A lot of cars will claim, Madam, what happened? <laughs> oh, your members are very. One day I tried, one man came, he said, No, instead of you to walk, even if it's my back. <laughs> I said, Please, can you allow me? The man said, No, ma, no, this place, no, you won't walk like this. Before the other one claimed, Madam, he said, I said, what? So am I not entitled to walk on this street? <laughs> <laughs> so what I do, uh, we have a campground. Okay. So sometimes I drive down there okay. and walk around. Sometimes I used to go to the stadium. Then they started disturbing me. Please, man, pray for my hand. Pray for my I said, please, <laughs> I want to walk around. You see people, they will finish uh, their own running and labor. They go and wait. Excuse me, man, we are here for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped it. So, <laughs> so I like that. Then I also like walking. Don't like lazy moments. Okay. So like I like walking as long as I am alert. Okay. What's your advice for female politicians? Hmm, to be strict. If they are going there, they should go there and create a difference. To be strict. To be strict and straight. Straightforward, okay. yes. To avoid corruption. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. Um, just a few questions to do. What's your idea about uh, women are to be seen and not to be heard? Where, where is that coming from? I don't really know where that comes from. Okay. Uh, because uh, even from the Bible times, okay. yeah, women were not to be seen and not to be heard. 
And if as strict as Judaism was, women were still in leadership position, then uh, again, that's what I mean by oppressors. They wouldn't want to know that God has called this woman. Oh, it has to be through her husband. You know, some people want to see me. Hey, oh, sorry, ma. There is some equation that used to bother me. I say, yes. What is it? Is your husband in ministry? So, because God cannot use a woman without a man. That is what they mean. So it should have been my husband that had a calling. Then I come from behind. So all those things are wrong. They are man-made laws and rules. And not God. If God is calling me, designing me for that purpose, he will give me a husband that will understand okay. what God is doing. He won't give me a man that... You go, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know my evangelist now. No, you wouldn't be, don't be so. You will know that, he, 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 that you will know that God is a jealous God. And if you don't allow the wife to do what he wants the wife to do, that might be enough. So, my husband is an older Christian than me. My husband is uh, more worthy than me, especially. In more worthy. More worthy. Okay, more worthy. Okay, yes, thank you. Than me. Hmm. Uh, in area, I have gifting. Okay. Uh, but my husband in area of holiness, church building, demonstration, uh, you know, establishment in faith, my husband is heavily loaded. Then I can do all the evangelistic work, great pro programs, uh, bring people in. Then uh, we teach them and establish them. So when my husband is around, he does that. You know, that time I was working with oil companies. Anytime he comes, he does that. But now he's retired now, so now he's home. So even now he's on mission to our Cameroon churches that are doing a kind of uh, Cameroon national retreat. So he's the one there. And so that is how it is. It does not necessarily mean that uh, the husband must be must be a pastor. If not, they, will, they should hand over the work. No, because on that day, there is no sex, no male, no female. And we all shall stand before him to give account as a safe soul. What did you do to impact the kingdom of God? And you now say, my husband, my husband, they will ask you, where is he? Or your husband will come and say, because of my wife, my ministry living, God will ask you, where is the wife? Because we are not going to marry. This marriage is just for earthly enjoyment, togetherness, fellowship. Because we can, our makeup is such that we can't do without those things. But then, also know that we are divine creation also. Eternal, eternal creation. That's why we have soul. Animals have only spirit. But we have spirit and soul. So that makes us eternal. That at the end of it all, we are going to stand before him that created male and female, created he them in his own image and give account. And another thing I really feel it is wrong also is when husbands don't give their women a free hand, you know, to, okay. to respond to a calling. They will now say the Bible says woman must be subjected to the husband. Now, to receive a calling is not being rebellious against the man. Instead, it's a blessing to the family. But the situation where you, it must be, some, some, some women said, God called me, but when it was, there was so much trouble, I handed over to my husband. You see that the thing is stalled. Because God will call one person, not two, for one thing. He will not call this. He is not the author of confusion. You cannot call a wife and force the husband you know, into it. You cannot call the husband and force the wife into it. The place of the pastor's wife is there, always. But a situation where we think, because my husband has a calling, so I have a calling. We create mistakes. Some, some women have actually scattered churches. Yes, because of not actually knowing the role of the pastor's wife. They believe that they, they own, so it's like a business. <laughs> So thank, thank you very it. much, ma. Um, what's your idea of beauty? What's beauty to you? Well, um, beauty to me is appreciating creation 
and knowing that um, God created us in his image perfect. So we are complete. So we don't really need artificiality. Yes, I don't believe that I have to wear Chinese hair, that cut hair, or Japanese hair, and style hair, and put things, and carry another load on top of this, our thick African hair. I don't believe that. I don't believe that I have to go and change the texture of my hair. Because when God created me and gave me this hair, he did not want me to tamper with it. The Bible says, can an Ethiopian change his color, his skin? Now, if you cannot, you cannot. So, you now go on relaxing, carrying, you know, acid on your head. On your When you develop hypertension too early, you say, uh, Satan is attacking me. It's from your head. A lot of heat. Then after that, you enter into electrical heat again, drying the brain. And this some people do twice a month, thrice a month. Some of them that are very rich, they even do it weekly. Now, those things, I don't phantom it. Because God has given you, because you don't want to be natural. So you now make up. So you are making up for what? For God. So where there was insufficiency, you are making up. And some people say that is part of dressing. Okay. Uh, now if you say that is part of dressing, what makes you think that your natural self, you can't dress it, keep your hair very clean, plait it if you must plait it, hold it on if you will hold it, design it anyhow you want to design it, but it's nature. Let people appreciate nature. Then when God created people and spread all over the earth, he, the Bible says he created them for himself, for his own good, for his own purpose. So that means we are not created to come and design another thing in us. It is a dissatisfaction and joy of God to see varieties. So the Africans, this is how they look. The European, that is how they look. The Asians, that is how they look. But a situation where the Africans are altering up to the complexion, okay. rubbing things to look uh, whitish or yellowish or greenish, and uh, you know, tanning and doing all that, they don't appreciate their color. And they don't appreciate that this our African hair is a beauty. That is why even the whites, when they try to do film, they want to take us back to the 60s, where there was no so much adulteration on African body. So to, today, people wear a lot. You see a woman, you can't know who she is. You see this, you know. So for me, beauty is keeping it natural. Okay. Yes. You wear perfume? Why not? Why not? Spices. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see it as uh, body spices, which is there okay. in the scriptures. Can you the name so you know? Uh, my perfumes are very expensive, so I don't want you to put, say I, I am uh, smelling the same. <laughs> no, they will say I am worldly. <laughs> no, but you can tell us. No, okay, so. my perfumes are very expensive. Okay, you don't want to make them. Okay. Uh, um, can you share with us how you came into the ministry? Ah, that is a long time now. Well, well, when I had a calling, I had. That was when. I was uh, in 1988. In 1988, for two weeks, I had revelation that was like daily for two weeks, and God telling me uh, that He wants me to go and preach the gospel that as the people get saved, they will be delivered from their problems. And God told me the mistake churches were making, trying to handle spiritual problems without salvation. So go there, let people get saved. That was actually what gave name to our church, Liberty Gospel Church. So you gain your liberty by the gospel. Okay. Yes. That's your standard. Yes. Then at the end of it, when you become saved, then you have to be well taught so that you don't go back to the mistakes of past life and still become entangled again. So the Lord took me, showed me a vision that had to do with inconsistencies of uh, certain ministers and so on. But so it was just like enlightening me, taking me through what I should do, what I shouldn't do. So that was how I do. Then I told my husband, and uh, my husband 
He said, yes, the Lord's hand is upon you. Nobody can say no. And uh, then I started. Thank God for the life of your husband. How will you describe him? My husband, a believer, a child of God, and one also that has a passion to make heaven, not just himself, to see a lot of people make heaven. And he has this passion for people to serve God. So like so that is why he does a lot of training for workers. Okay. Um, and trying to we try to multiply ministry for everybody to have an aspect of service render to God. So um, I have what you wear the other side. I mean your favorite outfit, you like plenty gowns or something, what you like that? Like um, it depends. There are times I would like to wear suits and hats, and I really have them. <laughs> I really have hats, and I can wear, 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 wear. Others of that are let me be African. Okay. So I wear a lot of African attires, okay. and um, I design my clothes. Yourself? Yes, because I have to call the they lost. Sometimes we stay till midnight. Sometimes we stay till almost 3, 2 a.m. Designing. Um, because I may not have time for every day to do that. So, uh, I, I, it has to be what I want so that you won't show what you like. For you, it seems you like um, covering your, I mean, your, your clothes are always covered, whether suits or native. Mm -hmm. Because that is what God wants us to do. When 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 the two men, uh, man and woman, became naked, God and they carried leaves, yes. and God knew that this thing will shrink. <laughs> With a little sun, it will shrink, so their nakedness will still be exposed. So God now look for what will cover them effectively, without being affected by the weather. So He killed the animal and used the, the skin of the animal to make coats to cover their nakedness. So any dressing that does not cover nakedness. Is the money. Okay. What's your advice for women folk? For women folk? Yes. Well, um, women should always know that it was by them that sin entered the world. Okay. And God is very mindful of every woman in the world. Are you still the Eve of the Garden of Eden? Or are you somebody that God can rely on, like Deborah, like Mary, the mother of Jesus, like those many Marys that helped Paul in his ministry? So all those things are what the women should aspire to do. And a woman should not be fetish, should not be diabolical should not be wicked, should not have wicked intent. A woman should learn to correct the causes that came on the women. Cause is thy conception for this thing. So it's not, it's not in pregnancy. It's the, for conception means all the members of the reproductive system of the woman, including the pregnancy itself, comes under a cause. So that is why gynecologists are becoming very rich. Yes, because if it is not the breast, it is the ovaries. If it is not the ovaries, it is the cervix. If it is not the cervix, it is the uterus. If it is not the uterus, it is internally fibroid disease, then hormones, you know, servicing. So the women have much more complications because of that cause. So to order the life of the woman back, the woman must deliberately love God and become mild. Otherwise, you will still be seen in the light of Eve. What will you be remembered for? Me? For everything that I have done for God. <laughs> At the end of my life, um, I want to be remembered for being a true child of God. Okay. And setting the pace okay. for my generation to follow. Because I discovered that before I started ministry, I started my ministry actually in 1992. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were very, I, I received my revelation, but you know, I had to pray my way through 
but eventually August 1992 I started I began the Liberty Gospel Church now before I came in it was very rare in Nigeria uh, it's, it was not common to see a woman leading ministry you, you can see them leading prayer groups and leading women's program and in leading the women's program they say come from any church we don't care we don't care but Jesus cares Jesus cares Jesus does not want white black yellow to come and mix together at the end they still go back in the same they are various colors now if you gather women from all walks of life from the good the bad the ugly and you are so afraid to tell them the truth so that they won't say they won't say they won't say i see you as a coward and i see you as somewhere that is building you are one of the mother god that the goddess is building an empire for satan because if it has to do with God, let the truth be told and let the people be safe so that the people can worship him the way it ought to be. Thank you. How can a girl child be positively harnessed so that they will not fall prey of these adventurous men out there? Well, in this present generation, yes, sir. because you can't say what they are watching in their rooms. You can't say the phones you give them and uh, it's making it very difficult for parents. And they are here in Nigeria out adopting European lifestyle and American lifestyle and using their languages even on their parents. Mom, that is child abuse. Mom, stop spanking us. This, 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 and that. So, one, we need prayers. We take time to pray for our children. And, and compel them. When I say compel, it's not necessarily like force, okay. but making the home such that they hear the word of God always. Okay. They are always in the church. They grow up like other children, you know, like ministers' children. You don't give them special seat. They don't treat them specially hmm. so that they can know that they are souls. Hmm. Because the situation where ministers' children are carried and given special seat, and top top uh, people of uh, in the church care for them. You have already spoiled those children. Their head will not come down. By the time they become teens, they are used to you know that kind of services ahead, and they want to go that way. But like I used to do, sometimes my children walk to the church. They trick. They trick to the church and trick back. Then sometimes. And when they were younger, when I'm preparing message, I make them come and stay and open the Bible for me. Please, you open this passage. Yes, you open. So you read, you read. So you say, ah. I say, yes, continue read. So <laughs> all that is just to help administer something. Then all of them belong to the children's um, units. Grow up in with the teachings, with these, with other children. And then most importantly, pray. Because as they go to school, they try to see a lot of differences they didn't see at home. And uh, if there is no strong hand of God, <laughs> we can lose them. So usually, it's always the best way to get uh, girls. And they grew up in, there is nothing else that can deliver and save like the word of God. A teen girl that has Christ, that has received Christ into her life is, 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 is the best for the family. Mm. Than a teen girl whose eyes is on the club, wants to club, wants to club. So that is why we really need to pray. But you see some women, they spoil their children too early. They start fixing the hair of a child from two years, three years, four years. They start painting the nail of the child. Does the child need that? The child putting eyeshadow. And when they read the Bible, the Bible says, and he met him in the book of Proverbs. And he met somebody that had the attire of a harlot. How do harlots dress? The Bible says they are lousy. So that means if you allow your child to dress like a harlot too early, the child is going to be very lousy uncontrollable attitude. The child is going to be weird. The child is going to 
join bad companies. The child is going to be out of your control. So because of that, you can't gain that child again. But you started. It's what the child came to see. But let the child come and see that this is the way my parents are. And he now struggles to go out of that. You see that the child will go out and come in, go out and come in. But then, that is just that. So it's, it's a two-way thing. And those men that spoil girls, yes, God always, especially in the face of innocence of those girls, God always punished them seven times more than any other. They suffer a lot in this life. And in the life to come, they will share with the devil. So I, I advise the men, because some of them want to sleep with virgin, so they rape them. You know, and that is the money. It's mommy with that spirit. And some, some of them for rituals. So all those things. And I just want to warn men, next time you see somebody's daughter, who is also a potential wife to somebody, and you stretch your hand and touch that child, God will disgrace you and disgrace your family. That is what God will do. Mm. Are men really giving the women chances in this country, even in the work of the ministry? Uh, well, to answer that, I will, I will start by saying that who is restraining the woman? Women are going to school and they are complaining. They are not giving us chance. University is open. Women are going. Now, women come out and apply for work. They are giving jobs. But women are complaining. Um, if they give us chance, if they give us chance, who is holding the woman from excelling? So you now discover that women have inferiority complex, so to say. You see a woman who is even a minister. She goes there and keep quiet for all those years. And when they, I said, the men no grill, who held your mouth? <laughs> so women should stop all this complaining because they use it as a cover-up for their failures. The men don't stop women. If you are a woman engineer, come and excel in your field. A man being an engineer cannot stop you. Nigeria is white and the land vast. So I don't really believe in that of chance, except you are talking of marriage. Okay. When a woman becomes married, then they have to agree with the husband. When they are setting their priorities, there must be that family agreement. Uh, uh, it's not good for you, my, my wife, to go and work in Abuja while I live in uh, Benue. You know, it's not, or I live in Akwa or River State. It's, it's not good. And when they say it's not good, it's not good. Because the children, the this, the that, the that. So they, they set their priorities. But to say that because you are a woman, on account that you are a woman, you cannot practice engineering. That is when it becomes an operation. But otherwise, since I have not heard a man telling a woman you can't practice your deeds because of marriage, I think the women should stop complaining and move forward. Yes. Looking at the Beijing conference, have we really achieved the percentage ratio for women? What is the Beijing conference? The Beijing conference then said that thirty-five percent should be given to women. Of what? Of um, maybe position, appointment, things like that. There should be thirty-five percent. Is it not when the women are when when they are qualified? So they should give it to. Uh, women, even when they are not qualified to occupy. Me, I believe you should merit whatever office you occupy. I don't like such sentiments and sympathies because at the end it's the populace that will be deprived. Um, finally, secret of your success. And I will also combine that What one. success? By God's grace, the achievements we've made so far in the ministry, in the film industry, song industry. Well, I don't really see those things as success. I see them as what you should do. Okay. Yes, what you should do. But if you now say it's success, that means you've arrived. Okay. And I have not done So you've not even arrived? No, yet. I have not started. Okay, you've not started. Thank you very much, yes. ma'am. And um, that question, I intend to um, um, join in it with um, your film. 
industry? What about the issue of copyrights in this country? How are you coping? I don't really want to go into that. People uh, do all do all that, but it doesn't stop God from what He's doing. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other thing, ma? <laughs> no, it's you that arranged the interview. So it's you that will have other things. Okay. Thank you very much, ma. Um, I've, I'm okay, ma. Thank you. Do you have any special day in your life? Like day you gave your life to Jesus. That's what you told me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then any interesting moments? Every day is interesting with the Lord. So you, Every okay, day, yes. Okay. Man. As as it makes me to see that day. So it's a gift. That day becomes a gift. Okay. Man. Yes. And I use it joyfully. Okay. Would you like to talk about insecurity in the country? The solution. The solution? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the insecurity is in the country is man-made. Really? Mm, it's man-made. How? Well, uh, it's man-made because uh, people took decision to destabilize the country okay. and are doing it effectively. And uh, and people people were gaining by it, mm -hmm. not knowing that when you give evil a little spark, it will accelerate. When people say, we kill Christians, we kill Christians, we kill Christians, and you start killing Christians, but you know the God of the Christians always turn things around. Mm. After sometimes you start killing yourselves. So that's what Nigeria is saying now. Mm. The idea was eliminate Christians, mm. but now they are eliminating everybody. Mm. The Christians, the pagans, the Muslims, even the Muslims more. So that is it. So the insecurity is man-made. Okay. The day Nigeria wants to end it, they will end it. Really? Yes. Um, the change mantra and fight against corruption in this country by the present administration. What's your own view of it? Oh, I've just started. I think, okay, <laughs> I don't know, because I'm still waiting to hear, oh, they've nailed this one. I don't talk of, uh, we, they arrested this one, collected money. It has always been like that from a person just time till now. And we don't know where the money goes to thereafter. So if they're fighting corruption, they should fight it in such a way that we don't suffer. The nation is suffering. Mm -hmm. This present generation came in when Naira was 150. Just last year, 150 pen, you know, but now it's 400 and something. So fighting corruption should even make the money to have more value. We should be going to 80, 50, uh, you know, 50 naira per one dollar. And it has actually destabilized uh, people and made the poor to really sink poorer. Mm -hmm. And I just want to believe that Mr. President has to sit up. I don't think he has good advice as on financial matters, and I, I I cannot advise him. But I want to tell him that he promised to make naira one to one dollar. We are watching. Okay, thank yes. you very much. Then the last question. Sorry, <laughs> finally, the change mantra. How can we really achieve it? I mean, the change that we are learning for in this country. The change. It's everybody that will be involved. Okay. Everybody. And look, let me tell you, the church has the power to the change the church, yes, to change things by the word. But you know, the government don't recognize the church. They mm. try to oppress the church. And they cannot solve. There are certain problems that the government cannot solve. Even if they, they build prison as vast as and pack everybody and put it. So they become a, a country that are ruling prisoners. But the church has solution. Hmm. What is solution? To every the church has solution. If somebody becomes safe hmm. and lives and lives an orderly life and is brought into the into governance, what will you see? The, the straightness. Because this person is not working for man. He sees himself occupying a position he will give account to Jesus Christ. So because of that, he orders him. Now, to do that, you don't need to put the church under threat or anything. This nonsense I hear is going on in Kaduna. Uh, it shouldn't be, yes, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be so. And I'm still waiting for the current president to call all ministers and take us to Kaduna. Let us protest. Let us tell this person that it has never happened so. Because if we want to follow it in the East, it will be a different story. 
I don't know mosque here. Yeah? So somebody cannot just because you are a Muslim leader to lead for eight years, then you vent your anger of Christian Christians' existence in this country that you were born to see. You if if you pull down houses when you were in Abuja, it was okay. But to go and make such strict laws that is actually choking Christians more than the Muslims. You are fighting against God. Okay. Uh, and I, I don't think anybody should keep quiet. The current president should keep quiet. They should get up and do something and stop that mad man because he's a mad governor. Something is wrong with him. And if nobody tells him the truth, then he's going to squeeze Christianity in Kaduna while they have a free day. Yet. They are carrying uh, boxes, quack, quack, cleaning people's legs, doing this, and people are paying them. No hot, no threats. They are selling suya. Some say they go and bring human, human flesh and come and sell it. We don't know. They should stop that. We all have things. But because of oneness, okay. yes, we try to say, let us pray for the nation to move forward. There's no point destabilizing, you know, those who issue those crooked and very wicked decrees. It's God that fights them. So let us be the Nigeria we know. Thank you very much for your time. Thank I'm you. very grateful.